Welcome to Serpent Song Sanctuary. I'm Zana Sito, and I am so glad you're here. Today, we're going to make another dish in the Better For You Comfort Food series. We are gonna make cabbage rolls. Cabbage rolls are uh, one of the dishes that I really loved when I was growing up. My mother made beautiful cabbage rolls and she taught me her recipe. Of course, my mother was not a vegetarian, so I'm doing my own little riff on it uh, using a plant-based meat patty <laughs> and a few other things just to beef it up. And we're going to uh, use some really beautiful things that I went out and gathered from the garden today. So I have here these two beautiful cabbages. One is a green cabbage and one is a savoy. And I think either one or both will work. And then I also have some of these beautiful red onions that I planted in July, so I wasn't expecting to get big, great, great big bulbs. Onions take a long time to mature. And I also have some beautiful carrots that I harvested. Uh, I have a yellow carrot and a white carrot. And I have some gorgeous parsley as well. Okay, so we're going to uh, use all of this and a little more in these cabbage rolls. So the first thing we're going to do is take a utility knife, a long, thin, sharp knife, and at an angle toward the stem. And I'm just going to work around. so I can core the stem out and keep the leaves intact. That's my main goal here. Okay, give this a good bang. And then that should come out yeah, very easily. <laughs> And now what we do is we go ahead and begin to peel away these whole leaves. I just want to gently work them off. And as I get deeper into the cabbage, the leaves get much smaller. So. I am going to set this aside. I have a pile of leaves here that I'm going to use and a pile here that I'm gonna parboil and freeze to use later. Okay, here we are at the stove. So I've boiled the two large leftover pieces. And now I'm going to begin to parboil my individual leaves. And as I put them in, I'm going to leave them for about three minutes, just until they soften up. I don't want them too soft because I don't want them falling apart when I make my rolls. There we are. So what we're looking for is for the spine to be just pliable. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take them out of the water. And give them a quick rinse with really cold water because I don't want them to keep cooking. And then it's just basically a rinse and repeat. <laughs> so while I'm doing my leaves, I'd like to begin to prepare my filling. So I'm going to take three decent sized cloves of garlic and peel them. and then mince them up.
them relatively small, small mints. is done and we're also going to finely chop uh, I guess this would be the equivalent of a small onion I'm also going to use a little bit of the green part of the onion something infinitely satisfying and nurturing about working with our food when it's fresh. Just the visuals of the colors and the smells, even the sounds, the feeling of it in our hands. It's also very, very uh, just grounding. <laughs> I think I'm only going to need, oh, that's a pretty big carrot, so, oh, I don't even know if I'll need that much. And I'm going to grate the carrot on the large grate. that's about a cup of carrot which is I think enough I also have some celery that I harvested from the garden ooh, a couple of weeks ago it keeps a long time and I've slowly been using it so I'm going to take some off of this bunch Probably looking at about a half a cup to a cup. And I'm also going to mince this pretty finely. So I'm trying to give you measured amounts right now. However, I just do this kind of by feel more or less. So you can figure out how much or how little of any of these ingredients that you'd like to use. The fresh parsley from the garden. say this is about two tablespoons of finely chopped parsley, one egg, about three quarters of a cup of coarsely smashed up gluten-free breadcrumbs and I pre-moistened these with about two tablespoons of broth. You can also use water if you don't have any broth available. And then I have here 12 ounces of the impossible ground beef. And you can use whatever version of plant-based meat that you like. Or if you wanna go there, you can also use ground beef. However, it's not how I roll. <laughs> and then I usually eyeball this, but I'm gonna try to get some measurements so that uh, so that you can follow the recipe. So I think I'm gonna go with about a teaspoon. I'm gonna use smoked paprika. My mother always used Hungarian paprika, but I don't have any on hand. So I think a, a nice teaspoon of smoked or Hungarian paprika. Believe it or not, even though my mother was German, she 
she used curry powder in so many things. So I'm also gonna put in a teaspoon of curry powder. And because cabbage, I'm going to add a teaspoon of caraway seeds. Mm. Let's do a teaspoon of Himalayan salt as well. And I'm just going to eyeball in uh, some freshly ground black pepper. All right. We roll up our sleeves and get in there with our hands. And just work all this together. Mm. Yum. It's looking good. <laughs> Okay, and there we have a really messy hand. And here we have the, uh, the mixture of impossible meat and veggies and spices. <laughs> I'm gonna set this aside and get to work on the potatoes really quick. So I have here between two and a half and three pounds of russet, potatoes. You can use any kind of potato that you like. Uh, also good is a nice yellow like butter potato. We're going to make mashed potatoes to go along with these cabbage rolls. Now I know some people like to do rice and that's just fine, but I grew up in a, with a German mother. <laughs> so uh, I ended up eating a lot of mashed potatoes and potatoes when I was growing up. I'm just gonna give these a really large dice. And I have my water still boiling that I used for the cabbage. And so we're just gonna use the same, same water. potatoes go until they are soft and a fork stuck inside runs through with no problem. Okay, let's make some cabbage rolls. I have here the cabbage that is parboiled and here we have the filling. So I'm going to grab about a palm full, maybe a little bit more. and roll this up and just keep adding some leaves along the outside so I get a really good bite of cabbage. I really want that, that cabbage taste in there. Put another one here. I want to also make sure that the meat doesn't have the meat <laughs> doesn't have anywhere to start escaping from. There we are. Beautiful. And I'm gonna take my mother used thread. And it was always a kind of a game <laughs> to try to get the cabbage roll. Uh, unwound from the thread. So I am going to use some cooking twine instead. Let's make a nice little parcel here. Cabbage roll parcel.
And there you have it. A nice little uh, cabbage roll parcel. So I will cut the extra twine off of that and make the rest. Here they are, all rolled up and ready to go. So I am going to give these a pan sear on the outside and then I'm gonna finish them in the oven. Okay, I've transferred my uh, cabbage rolls woo, into a pan. And right now I'm just trying to get a nice Sear, yeah, that's not quite ready yet. A nice sear on <laughs> all sides. So we'll let these go just a little while longer on this side. Ooh, yeah, that's loud. <laughs> and my potatoes are also done. They break apart very easily when I stick a fork through, so they're ready to go. So let's go ahead and make mashed potatoes while we're letting these sear. And we'll just keep checking these and turn them from time to time. And I even want to set them on their edges so the edges get seared as well. All right, and then I'm going to take my handy hand mixer and first of all grab some vegan butter. Probably the equivalent of about a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. Maybe two tablespoons. <laughs> I like them nice and buttery. There we are. Beautiful. And then I'm just going to mix this in. Beautiful. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of oat milk. So you can use real milk and real butter if that floats your boat, but I do like to go plant-based when I can, and there we have it. Actually, let's add a little salt. And there you have it, some beautiful mashed potatoes, and they are fluffy. <laughs> and then I'd like to prepare um, a little sauce as well. I have some tomatoes that I harvested from the garden and stewed and froze. So I'm going to be using those. I'm going to be putting in uh, two about Two good cloves of garlic. I really like garlic in case you uh, haven't been able to tell. <laughs> and this time I'm just going to give them eh, a very rough chop. I'm not too concerned with getting them fine. And I have some more of that lovely onion from the garden and just a little bit of onion will do maybe maybe a quarter of a small onion doesn't have to be a lot and this as well I'm just gonna give this a nice little dice Then I'm going to go ahead and saute these onions and garlic until they're translucent. And then chop up my oyster mushrooms that I have left over and add those in as well. Another couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Kind of eyeballing that out. Okay, and then we're just going to add 
aromatics. Once the onion is translucent and maybe just a little browning on the edges, we'll add in the mushroom. Mm. And you can use any kind of mushroom that you have on hand. Um, I just happen to have oyster mushrooms from a mushroom kit that I grew. in just a little bit more oil because it's feeling like a little dry. And then once the mushrooms begin to shrink in size, you can kind of tell when you're starting to cook, then you're going to bring in the stewed tomatoes that I froze. So full disclosure, my mother never made tomato sauce with her cabbage rolls, but my husband loves it. So I've started making tomato sauce and I have to say, I actually like it. So, all right, we're gonna add to this one can, oops, one can of tomato paste just to get it nice and thick. Mm. And really pump up that tomato flavor. Right, some salt. And about a eh, teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, somewhere in there. Some black pepper. All right, and this is strictly not vegetarian, but I have found that it adds a really beautiful umami aspect to sauces. And it is anchovy paste, so you can certainly skip this step if you want to have a vegetarian. I do eat fish sometimes, so I don't mind this at all. I think I'm putting in about a tablespoon of the anchovy paste. Once I have that well incorporated, I have about a tablespoon of cornstarch, and I have that mixed in with a mm, quarter cup of water. So I'm just pour this in as well. Maybe not all of it. Let's see how this acts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not quite all of it. Yeah, turn it down. Because it will start to splatter. Oh, yeah. And that's beautifully thick. Take a little taste. All right, let's pull the cabbage rolls and see what they look like. Oh, there we are. Beautiful. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, I'll get it plated up and I'll meet you back over at the island. Okay, here it is. So, this is a comfort food meal from my childhood. This is beautiful cabbage roll and mashed potatoes and a really creamy, rich tomato sauce. All right, let's cut into this and see how it looks.
Mmm. Oh yeah, that is just gorgeous. It's fully done inside. The cabbage is very soft. It's still holding together. However, it's easy to cut with just the butter knife, so that's nice. All right. It's still pretty hot. <laughs> Yummy. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I can taste the caraway seeds. Really nice with the cabbage. I was tempted to put a little bit in the sauce, but didn't need it. I'm glad I didn't. All right, let's try the mashed potatoes with this tomato sauce gravy. Mm -hmm. Spot on. Lovely. Well, there you have it. Something really yummy to satisfy that savory craving and better for you, comfort food, healthy, straight out of the garden, everything, just about everything out of the garden. And from my heart to yours, if you end up making this, Please let me know. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you like my content, please subscribe. And it would just make my heart so happy if you would share my videos. Meanwhile, I'm going to go enjoy this uh, and get the rest of the family in here for dinner. And until I see you again, I want you to be nourished, be inspired, and be transformed. I'll see you next time. Enjoy your comfort food. Bye-bye.